April Fool's Day audit, which is kind of <laughs> ironic, but um, so thank you for joining us this evening. Tonight we have a joint workshop with the school board as well as the council to go over our annual audit. So we'll go ahead and punt that off to Tom to sure. talk to us a little bit. Yes, this evening, as uh, Jim Holbrook uh, mentioned, is uh, an annual opportunity for your independent auditor. This is an auditor that uh, the town hires. Staff provides assistance to the auditor, but they work for you, not us. Um, though we have a very good work relationship, Christian Smith is a principal with Mac Page, happens to be a resident of town as well. Um, born and raised here, actually, a product of Scarborough High School, which is always nice to see. So he's here again this evening to provide a presentation on the audit for last fiscal year. All right. Uh-oh. Is something? <laughs> yeah. I have the handouts. Go ahead and start. All right. We do have some handouts, which are oh, there there. We, go. we got it going. You can take, uh, you know, uh, take those home with you if you want to refer to them later on. Um, you know, really, what we're going to do here is more of a high-level overview of about the audit and go over 
Uh, some of the highlights within the financial statements also go over the management letters that we did uh, that we issued. Um, and so I it's kind of just to re, uh, restate what Tom had just mentioned. I always like to start off with talking about the relationship with the auditors so everybody understands how that works. We are independent auditors and we're, we're hired by and work for the, the council, the school board. Um, we work with management to perform the audit and you've hired us to express an opinion on the financial statements. Um, ultimately, the financial statements are management's responsibility as well as internal control is, is management's responsibility. Um, and we've issued, uh, so basically you've hired us to issue an opinion on the financial statements as to whether or not they are fairly stated in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. And so I'm very happy to, to report that uh, the financial statements both for the city and the school are, um, uh, have been presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. So we've expressed what we call an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion, meaning it, you know, the figures are accurate. It, it includes all the required presentation, disclosure items, footnotes uh, that are required by the accounting principles. So there are quite a lot of reports that we do issue, um, technical term statements on auditing standards, 114 letter, which is uh, the letter to you, those who are charged with governance. Um, I can just kind of paraphrase that. We've issued the standard letter. Um, it talks about if there were any disagreements with the uh, Having trouble with this uh, going in and out. Turn it off, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Be careful. Okay. Um, so I lost the page here. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so, so in that letter, we would describe significant accounting policies. If there were changes in accounting policies or practices by the by the town or the school, um, if we had any disagreements with management, if we had any problems uh, in performing the audit. Um, significant audit adjustments, all those kind of things are covered in that letter. And so, as I said, that's a, that's a, a basically the standard of clean letter. There were no disagreements with management. There were no significant changes. There were no changes in accounting policies or practices. Um, and the audit, the audit did go well. So that's kind of a summary of the audit and how it went. Um, we do issue a separate management letter for the town and the school department, which we'll go over next. Uh, there are separate financial reports, one for the town, which includes the school department, and we also issue a separate departmental only financial statement just for the school. Um, and those reports are quite different. We're also required to do uh, what's called the single audit report, so where we test the uh, grant programs uh, for this, the town and the school, um, compliance with federal uh, grant requirements. So we've, um, this year we tested two programs. One was the HIDA, High Intensity Drug Trafficking Program, for which we're a fiscal agent. And uh, the other one was the um, special education grant at the school. There were no, no findings with regard to either grant program. Um, so that's, that's very good. Uh, we also have to issue a report to the State of Maine Department of Audit um, about the results of the audit. Um, we also have to uh, issue a reconciliation of the school's MEDEMS upload to the State Department of Education, whether or not that's accurate, and we can reconcile that to the financial report, and also have to state whether or not the school department complied with the Maine School Finance Act. So all of that has been done. It's all you know, no, no findings, no issues with, with, any of that, um, with any of those reports. So if anybody has any questions on that before we get into the management letter, letters. Uh, we'll start off with the town management letter. Uh, just like to have, make sure people have an understanding of the different. Um, there's different levels of severity when we do have management letter comments. So the highest level would be a material weakness. Um, the next highest level would be a significant deficiency. So these are these are situations where there's a, a weakness in controls that that lead us to believe that there either is or could be a uh, misstatement within the financial statements or a risk to ask to, to loss of assets. Um, uh, so, with regard to the town, we had one management letter comment that we would consider uh, the lowest level, which is a, a you know, best practices recommendation. Um, and so, we so you do have that there in front of you. And it, this comment, this is something we, we try to look at different areas each year. And, and one of our focus among most many of our clients this past year was to look at credit card practices and policies. So. Um, we did look at your uh, procurement card policy and procedures. Um, and so a couple things there that we noted that uh, the practice is for department heads to improve their own statements. So best practices would be to have somebody else look at it rather than the department head. Um, definitely important to note that the transactions we looked at, there's, um, you know, there's, there's, there were no transactions that we looked at that appeared to be improper. Um, but we just did notice that while well, the practices that are in place could be improved by 
um, having additional oversight over the uh, approval of credit cards, and then also to update your policy. It hasn't been updated since 2002, and it would be a good idea to look at that and maybe update it with respect to um, you know, who should have credit cards, what are the, what are the limits, and, and how they're going to be um, overseen. If there was a position, um, I guess probably the uh, internal audit position maybe, or there was a position purchasing agent that, that used to audit these and that, that position is no longer filled. So that's, the policy is outdated as it states that that should happen and hasn't been happening. So you may want to figure out a way to, to change that policy. If there's any questions on that? Um, school had uh, a couple of uh, mandatory comments as well. Also, um, best practices recommendations. Um, and, and, and in each case, um, Basically, it just comes down to just documentation. Um, we think there are appropriate um, internal control practices in place. We just didn't see evidence of the documentation of the practices. So there's a, a requirement that two individuals um, sign off an initial cash receipts at the student at the school lunch program. Um, we, we did not consistently see the initials. So just to make sure that you're following your internal policy and, and that that's happening. And then a similar recommendation over student activity funds. Um, so with that, with respect to that. Um, the high school and Wentworth school bank reconciliations did not have evidence of review and approval uh, by the by the principal or the responsible party if it wasn't the principal. Um, and then in respect to the Wentworth school, um, cash disbursements and cash receipts didn't have evidence of approval as well. So in, in each case, it's just looking at doing a better job of documenting um, uh, the approval function happening. So I don't know if anybody's got any questions on that. Next slide is. It seems like it's going in and out. I don't think I'm doing anything. No, you're not. <laughs> All right. Um, so again, you know, I, I could provide here a summary of what's in the town's financial statements. Just you know, and this is. I was hoping, you know, that it could be used for you as a reference if you did really want to get into more detail within the financial statements because there there is a lot of information in the financial statements. Um, but just so you have an idea of what's in them, uh, there's a transmittal letter. Uh, pages 1 to 10, and this is the ninth year of the CAFR program, so that's uh, an award you get from Government Finance Officers Association that, that, that says that uh, you've, you've, um, your financial reporting meets a high level of standards and excellence and, 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 and just includes an incredible amount of detail. So, um, you know, the citizens, uh, the fundraising agencies, everybody has access to a, to a uh, extensive amount of information on, on the town. Um, just, uh, just as an aside, I would suggest um, I'd be for me to characterize it as good reading, but uh, as Christian <laughs> said, the management discussion and analysis section in particular uh, is really a, a very, very thorough analysis, and if you can struggle through it, and it's it's not a real difficult read, it does give you a very good, very good sense of the, the financial condition of the town. So that's one piece that I would encourage you to look at. Uh, it's far more narrative and approach rather than numbers driven. Uh, and it's quite good. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, it is on the website as well, right? Oh, for certainly. people to take a look at if somebody out there wanted to have some nice light reading. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I definitely would agree that that's definitely uh, laid out to uh, help the, uh, the, you know, maybe the non-financial person understand where the town stands and how the year went. Um, if you're looking for our auditor's opinion, that's pages 17 through 19. It's actually three pages. At the top of page 18, there's a heading that says opinion. So that's where we say that, that the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with general accepted accounting principles. Um, let's see. I have to go to my version here. Lose my sense of it. All right, so yeah, the, the, the interesting thing about um, governmental financial statements is there, there are actually three sets of books. There's actually three sets of accounting levels. Um, uh, the, the top level or highest level, I would say, is on pages 39 and 40. So if you were to look at page 39, it's, it's statement one. Uh, that very first column there says governmental activities. This is all the town's funds rolled into one column. So this is a, a picture of the town all together. Um, it's it's kind of, it's, it's, it's supposed to be laid out as a business type model. So 
within these statements you'll see the, the capital assets of the town, the buildings, the roads, school buses are capitalized and depreciated, and you'll also see the debt presented as a, as a liability here. So the focus here is different than really how you operate. Uh, really pages um, 41 and 42, that really, that's really the layout of how you keep your books and records and how you operate. You operate on a fund level. So column one on page 41 is your general fund. And so, you know, obviously that's the largest fund, that's our budgeted fund, so that includes the, the, the town's general operations and the school's general operations as well. And so this ties in with the budget to actual, which is on page 44 in summary form. Uh, if you look further back, there's, there's additional detail that gives you detail by, um, pretty much by expense line in, in, the back, in one of the back schedules. So, um, so really, this is the, the page that I think most people are focused on. So on page 44, you'll see the results for the year. Um, the fund balance increased by 525428 um, And that was a component of revenues exceeded, uh, revenues exceeded budget by 947361 And expenditures were less than budget by 387758 So the overall result for the year was a positive increase in fund balance from from a little over nine million to nine million six hundred eight thousand four eighty eight for the year, and that's just the general fund. Christian, I wonder if you could speak to the fact that uh, on the school side, at any rate, in this fiscal year, there was some use of fund balance that was budgeted. What happens in that eventuality? Do you actually does that actually occur, or is that? Um, I think on the school side, they actually. Uh, for the, for the year into June 30, 2014, I think they did not actually use the fund balance. They also had an increase in fund balance. Um, I think you'll, you'll more easily see that when we go to the school's financial statements. Is the um, 9,608,000 inclusionary of total combined with municipal and school yes, fund and, balance? Yeah, and a, a good place to see that actually, if you look on page 41, back to page 41, we do break it out by um, different components. So under the general fund, which is the first column, if you look down towards the bottom, fund balances, you see that 9,608,488. Mm -hmm. And you'll see there's different lines here for um, education. So you'll see there's a, an amount restricted for education for 508,790. And then there's an assigned amount for education of 800,000. So the assigned amount of 800,000 is that's the that's the amount that they that was voted to be used in the June 30, 2015 budget year. Um, so if that plays out as budgeted, then that that means the school would still have 508,790 left to to spend or use in future years. Yeah. Now, so so one thing that's interesting about this particular schedule is that you have a um, I guess a, I don't know if I call it a policy, but a goal that you're uh, of having, um, I guess what we'll call unreserved fund balance, that, it, that it's at least 8.3% of your annual budget. And so that's, that's defined as the committed, assigned, and unassigned fund balances added together. And so I think it actually works up to the 8.6% is what I came up with. And hopefully that agrees with um, where, where, you, where you actually are. What's that? I think it's just below that. Just below can, that. Can you say that again? It's 8.3% it's of what? Your, 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 your internal policy is yep. to, to maintain an 8.3% of, 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 of total budget. Of, of total budget. various operating budgets, and there's specific items that are that are associated with it, school operating, general op, town operating uh, debt. There's a couple of other items within that that also make up that total operating. and uh, But not everything is included, so and that's, that's, I think, why we're coming up with different numbers. Yeah, if you go based on the numbers I have here, it comes up with like 8.6%. And so that's an internal goal. Do you have, what do you see or what do you recommend for other entities um, or, or is there a quarter that you see as sort of most best people, practice? Most people are right around the 8%, 8 to 10%. I mean, that's, I think, a general guideline is like, I think, the, the, I don't know, the bond rating agencies like to see at least one month's worth of your expenditures in uncommitted fund balance. So uh, that's, that's generally where people are. So you were below that the last few years. You were maybe 6%. Five, six percent, maybe the last couple of years. So you you brought that up. And there's been a concerted effort over the last four years on the town side to not use fund balance for the intent purpose of building it back. Uh, in 2009, I recall the council decided 
through a, a very public and open discussion uh, to hit fund balance pretty hard to keep the tax rate stable that year. And we've been rebuilding ever since, frankly. Uh, incidentally, in the budget do document I provided you this evening, uh, in one of the exhibits is the debt policy, if you care to look at it. No, sir. And, and, you, and you'll see that with the school as well. The school had actually used a lot of its fund balance and got pretty low um, uh, probably two or three years ago, and they start to build their fund balance up as well. So you'll see that in, the, in their separate financial statements. Christian, um, could you speak to the difference between school and town, though, because there is that uh, statute on the books for schools that says they can't retain more than 3%, although that's been waived in recent years? Right, yeah. Do you know where that's headed? Um, I, I don't. I, I haven't kept up on that, where that's headed. I mean, you know, do I've... <coughs> Uh, I didn't. I didn't make notes for tonight's meeting, but other school board presentations we've done recently. I mean, there's there's a wide range. We've got some schools that are one or two percent, and others that are 10, 10 really? or twelve percent. So we've got some that are really pretty high. Yeah. Um, I think we've sort of had that statute in the back of our minds because it says that you know if a school retains more than three percent at the end of a year, that they're supposed to fold that back into coming years so that they're not. You know, banking more than they really need to. Right. Which is a little bit the flip side of what the expectation is for the municipality. So. And, and isn't that, I think that's um, basically un, uncommitted fund balance too. So I think right, they, right. the, the 800,000 you brought towards next to 15 would be excluded from would that. Would be excluded from that as well. And, yeah. and things like, you know, teacher accrual and things that are, that are out there but committed wouldn't be part of that count. But it's been now four years, I think, since they've actually they've waived that statute and said, no, we'd actually prefer people to be able to retain fund balance. Um, right. They definitely have taken that I don't that know. Approach. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll uh, get rid of it altogether. Um, Makes it seem like one last thing, just within, you know, the, again, there's a lot of information in the, uh, the the town's financial report. I mean, there's probably 20 or 30 pages of footnotes as well that supports the, all the numbers that are in the financial statement. So, you know, if you did want to do a thorough read, there's, there's certainly a lot of information in here regarding your cash investment balances, your debt uh, <laughs> debt balances and maturities over the next, well, uh, for the life of the, dur the duration of the debt. Um, you know, so there's, there's definitely a lot of information in here. Um, going to make mention of what's coming, what's new, and so it's finally going to be here June 30, 2015. Um, next year there will be one fairly significant change to the to the town's financial statements in that um, uh, the accounting standards is changing and that they're going to require us to record your uh, estimate of the pension liability to participating in the main public employees retirement system. So they're supposed to disseminate information to all of the communities, and that's going to be recorded on your government-wide financial statements, um, it, and, and there's going to be probably like four more pages of footnotes on the liability and, and how it was arrived at and what it means. Christian, does that affect the school as well now that we're, we're funding, in essence, retirement for there, Yeah, there will be a school portion that will be included in that number. Um, so, but, you know, it doesn't, I mean, there's, it doesn't require that you fund it. It doesn't require that you come up with the money immediately, but it, it just, it, it, it puts it on the face of the financial statement so it's more front and center so everybody can see it. Uh, the bond rating agencies have always, um, they've come up with their own number, so it's not really a surprise to them. Um, they've, they've known about it, uh, so it's now it's just, well, we're going to include it here in, in more detail. Which, but uh, there'll be an unfunded liability, right? Oh, yes. We did receive a, a letter, actually a year ago today, that gave us an estimate of what Scarborough's pension liability would be. I think it's a little bit higher, and it's just the participating local district that excludes the school uh, teachers. We do have school PLD members, and uh, they, they estimated it to be about $4.8 that would be uh, booked as a liability. And talking to them today, they did suggest that it was probably going to be lower. However, we don't have the school's number, so it might just end up being that same number. I'm not sure. So uh, hopefully we'll have those numbers, but we'll have to have those numbers before too long. And yeah. is, it, is it Maine PERS who will provide and Maine. say, you know, here are your Scarborough retirees and here's the value of each of their pension Maine awards. PERS is supposed to provide that information and they will have had their auditors audit that data and then uh, the information we get, our auditors are then going to have to turn around and kind of audit the same information. Is there any requirement to fund it though in the coming years or is it 
There's no requirement. To fund There's no the requirement, school, so I think, at this stage. But then they never, report, they, yeah. they did that with uh, teacher accruals back in the day. You know, there was no requirement to fund it. But then, then they started kind of hitting us up because we weren't funding it. Uh, in talking to Maine Purse also, in total, they said for 2011, they were essentially 78% funded in their overall retirement program because I think that was part of the issue with this is that retirement systems weren't necessarily funding what they needed to fund to cover the retirement for the people who were retiring. In 2012, it, it dropped to 77%, and I asked her if that was still valid, and she said yes. So they're about 77% funded uh, on their retirement, which is Does that which is that pretty good, considering some of the other communities. Good. Does that mean that, State. We, that our liability becomes 23%, or does that no, mean just that our liability is the whole thing? It just means that... They, they are 23% short of being able to fund what they to need to fully fund pay out what they to pay out what they need to pay. They have promised, yeah. Is it a fair assessment, Christian, to say that these numbers are already well established at the state level, they're just being transferred down to the municipal level, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, it, well, yeah. The, 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 the measurement standards of how they come up with the numbers have changed, too, so that's, I, I think, ultimately, the impact is, is, is going to be, you know, they're, they're coming up with a new number for their, their unfunded portion based on the new standards. And you know what they're likely to do is to you know they're going to have to modify your future contributions based on where it stands. And so, the, the, I think overall my understanding is that Maine Purse has been pretty conservative in how they've done their valuations. So, like like we said, I don't we're not expecting a big significant change in the number, but I, that that's that's going to be the problem that some some states some uh, some states are going to be facing is that they're going to have to contribute more to. to to, to make the, the public retirement system more healthy. Well, I, I asked that because it was just announced today, I think it was already yesterday, and our bond rating is, and Pete Fitch gave us a better bond rating because of the shift in pension. Okay. A reduction in the state's pension requirements, but that doesn't mean they disappear. I think that means they just shift down to our level, correct? Mm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, yeah. I mean, ultimately, all the participants are liable for the, in, <coughs> you know, are liable for the, for the, the total. Uh, sure. of it. Who, whose bond rating went up? Uh, uh, did it go state. up? The states did. Yeah, the states it was. It was it, Fitch. Yeah, I think no. gave us it kept our double A rating, okay. but they're not. They're not the issuer. They're just a, a the consultant yeah. to okay. say you got to. No, no. Yeah. But this, the, what they stated was the reason it stayed double A. One of the reasons was the reduction in yeah. pension pension requirements for the state. Right. And it's it still, still there. We still get pushed off that. Well, that's right. that's, right. that's right. my right. point. Right. That, that's the point I'm trying to make is that this is not. This isn't a. So a way they can improve. It, it, yeah, this is not a. The fund isn't going away. The money's just they're shifting it from one side to another. It's just coming on our level. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. 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 I'll see. I'll take my comments for uh, there's, there's a similar standard. There's also post-retirement health care benefits that are received by retirees, and that's they're working on a change there that would require that to be fully booked as well. And again, you know, in both cases, we're talking about these are actuarial estimates of a liability. So, um, but it, but it does result in real dollars because your pension, your future contributions are based off of what they estimate it to be. So, uh, over time, it will change. Uh, so the next few slides are just some graphical representations of where we've been for the last three years. Uh, so this is just showing the trend with the, the town's fund balance that it has increased over the past three years. Um, as I mentioned before, it's at about 9.6 million now. Uh, it's about a five, six hundred thousand dollar increase from the prior year. It was at eight million in 2012. So there has been a, a conscientious effort to increase the, the health of the, of the town, increase the fund balance. Christian, the detail on that is on page. 44. Uh, let's see. That's you can match up that number on page 44. Yes. Yep. So that that explains the sources of uh, uh, in excess revenue over uh, expenses to cause the fund balance to go up by about 600,000. Yes. 560,000. Yes. Yep. 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 And the, yeah. The primary contributing factors were um, this unclassified revenue was up, and I think a like. A, Public uh, our community services revenue was up about $180,000 more than uh, budget. Um, I think salary reimbursement was up another $180,000, $200,000, another pretty big one. Um, and then in the expenditure lines, uh, public safety, 
underspent. They, they, they spent less than their budget by about 320, as in as well as the school department spent about 320,000 less than their budget. So those all contribute to the to the increase in fund balance for the year. So that excise taxes also were significantly higher than. Oh, year. yeah, that's right. Yeah, for revenues, yeah, excise taxes. So fund balance is something you can budget for. Uh, perhaps previously, some jurisdictions did that, so it's really a result of either under expenses or um, realizing more revenue than you budget, which is, is what contributes to fund balance. So the next couple slides just focus on the revenue trend. So here you can see property taxes, uh, for the three-year trend in property taxes. We were at 46 million in 2012, and this is just, this excludes um, excise taxes. Uh, almost 50 million in 2013, and we're at about uh, around pretty close to 54 million, about 53.8 million, I think, for 2014. So that and that is in line with what was budgeted. So property taxes uh, do come in at, at about the budgeted amount. I didn't see it, but I'll go ahead and read all those pages. Did, are the actual supporting mill rates and property valuations buried in here somewhere to get these numbers on the property taxes? Uh, in, in, the, yeah, in the financial statements, yeah, there's a footnote that covers what the mill there rate is. is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In my budget, there's a pretty clean, do very clean document, I think, that shows it's a 12 or 13 year history of oh, valuation commitment and tax rate. So oh, you great. can see how they all relate. And you can probably have convert those to graphical form okay. to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Page 55 of the footnotes on, uh, covers the property taxes and for that year, and then way out back in well, the well, statistical well, section. Well, page 55, thank you. In the statistical section, they have valuations by year, 10 years. Historical. Yeah, page 122 has property tax rates for the last 10 years. What page again? I'm sorry. Page 122. Yeah, well, thank you very much. So yeah. It's all buried in footnotes. And 125. Yeah. Hold that thought, though. I think you'll see the chart I have at least gives you a clean snapshot. Thank you. In a, in a single graph, though, this tells a, a tells volumes. Yeah. Um, this is partially due to, to tax shifting, I would say, also to uh, ever-increasing expenses at the local level, but putting increasing pressure on property taxes, yeah. clearly. Next slide shows other uh, three other categories of significant revenue sources in those trends. Uh, so the first column in uh, kind of a darker blue is the state education subsidy. Um, so that was about 4.6 million in 2012. Um, now it's about 4.2 million or so um, in 2014. And Kate and I were talking about that before the meeting started, and trying to remember what it was in 2008, 2009. And you said about, about seven, seven million, million in two thousand. Um, so you can also see here ex excise taxes has increased. It was um, around four million the last two years, and in this current year, it's above four and a half million, about four point six million. Um, and the other, the other, uh, you know, besides the state education subsidy, the state revenue sharing. So that went from about one point one million the last two years to the last two years to about 790000 in 2014. So state revenue sharing has gone down as well. Looking at some major expense trends, um, so the most significant department in, the, in the, uh, the town is education. The education budget was at $34 million in 2012. 36 million in 2013 and about 39 million in 2014. So there's been a, um, an upward trend in the total education expenses. And just thinking back two graphs ago, that same sort of activity following a very similar pattern with property tax. My calculations are correct. Uh, over 84% of school expenses are supported by property tax now. Say so, that again. So Over 84% of school expenses are supported by, solely supported by property tax. So 84% so of every dollar of taxes goes to the school. Yeah. Is the other way of, is that what you're saying? No. 84% no. no. of the budget comes from property tax. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah, but bear in mind, we don't have control over revenue sources either, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead, we just try to drop in state aid. Exactly. Right. Almost right. 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 7 million to 4 million going down. Right. Next slide, I've got a couple of the other uh, larger 
kind of the category for public safety. Um, kind of ticked upward over the last few years. It's now at about uh, 8.9 million in expenses, expenditures, whereas it was a little over 8 million a couple years ago. Uh, public works is a pretty significant one. That's at about 6.5 million, and that's been pretty steady the last three yeah, years. Pretty amazing. And uh, you can certainly see debt service is at 4. 4.5 million um, <coughs> on this slide. Now, of course, this this doesn't include the school, the schools debt. The schools debt is included in the school's budget line. <coughs> this is um, town only. Uh, so that debt service is uh, going down a little bit over over the years as debt matures, and we don't uh, issue more debt. Did you have an opinion at all about the level of debt that we have? Does that, does yeah. that factor into your? Recommendations or it's, it's just it's so hard. I mean, I've, in the past you can do like a you know debt as a percentage of your total budget or debt as a percentage of um, you know on an annual budget or, or 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 current expenditures as a percentage of the budget. And, and I've looked at different towns, and it's just so hard to make a really good comparison because every town is so different. I mean, like you could look at like a Sanford, they have very a very low percentage. But they're going, you know, they're going to build a hundred million dollars school this next year. They were approved for that, so there's, there's is obviously going to change. It's it's right. The state's paying. The state's paying. Well, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. But I think these going to show us their debt. They're, they're going to be one hundred million dollars. The state. True. So it's going to be on their Nothing costs. caught your the eyes being room. of concern about the debt levels that we have. No, I mean you're you're well below the, um, the you know there's a state maximum that you're uh, limit that you're allowed to do and most you know every, most communities are very well far below that so you are below that. Um, what just, is that, Christian? What's that? What is that amount? The debt limit. Yeah. I believe combined 15 percent. 15 percent of the value. Right? The, uh, the we're, valuation. We're below. Sure. What we list below three percent right now. Okay. The, the sort of debt level of fifty percent is scary numbers. Pretty You're talking it's hundreds of millions, five hundred million dollars in debt, something in that order of magnitude. We're below three. We're below three. Uh, we can provide that. Probably the best barometer uh, is talking to rating agencies. They scour these issues with fine tooth combs, uh, and, and as evidenced by you know maintaining. Very good credit ratings. I, I think it's not an alarming factor to them, but I think it's something that we need to have an ongoing conversation. I know uh, Councilor Baybon wants to make that a matter of the Finance Committee going forward, so we will. Technically, by state law, we could borrow up to $536 million, almost $537 million. We're only at 97, so we have this huge, but but I'm not necessarily that the state's <laughs> limits are, are, are ones we should be following. So. Let's hope never. Yes. Uh, so we're going to move on to the school's financial report. If um, there's no more questions there, there's only uh, two, two slides with regard to that. Um, so the school financial statements are quite different. It's a departmental only report, uh, so it's certainly a lot easier to understand. Um, I would just kind of we could just kind of skip right to uh, the budget to actual report on page five. Um, you know, and again, we have issued a, a an unmodified or clean opinion on the school department as well. Um, yes. Yes. Yep. Looking at the school department by itself uh, for the year, the school did have an increase in fund balance of um, $85,000, uh, $85,369. Now that compares to a plan, you'd plan to use $200,000 out of fund balance, so actually that's a favorable result for the year of about $285,000, um, whereas you didn't use fund balance. And so that's um, comprised of a, of a couple of different things. Um, revenues were up by $155,000 in total. Most of that's got to do with state agency clients. Um, expenditures were under budget by 320000 That comes from a number of categories, the most significant being facilities maintenance um, and regular instruction uh, being the two more significant categories. So as of the end of the year, uh, total fund balance for the school is $1,308,789. Um, I think that 
that by itself works out to be about 3.4% of your total fund balance, but if you back out that 800000 being utilized for the year we're in, um, you're at a much lower percentage, uh, you know, probably 1.5% or so. Again, I just want to underscore, as a practical matter, though fund balance may be budgeted as a revenue source, it's kind of used as a last resort. If it's not needed, it's not touched. So though in this uh, actual fiscal year, $200,000 was budgeted, it was not needed and therefore wasn't used. In fact, it was augmented by another 85000 based on a number of factors under expenditures and perhaps larger revenues. Um, and, and, and as Kate had mentioned before as well, so you're well under the, the, the state's, um, uh, their old policy of, of not caring for more than, not wanting the schools to carry for more than 3%. And so you're definitely within those um, those guidelines. Uh, just the next slide just shows the fund balance where it's been for the years, in the last three years. This is, this is total fund balance. So you were at about 600000 in 2012, which is pretty low, um, about half of where you're at now. So definitely... Uh, School has definitely worked itself up <coughs> into quite a bit healthier position. Um, hopefully, to be able to absorb you know, other other budget cuts if they do come from the state. So I can kind of a little light on going through the school's numbers, but, but you know, there is other information in here, including results of grant activities, so it's the lunch program, those are all kind of four and separate funds, and you can see the results for those if you want to look at the back schedule. So what was school construction is accounted for here, and of course that's been uh, completed. Um, there's a little bit of money left to want to spend at June 30, 2014, but at this point it's um, done. If anybody has any other thoughts or questions, oh. well, the good news is, great job. Nobody has any questions. That means you explained <laughs> it really well. <laughs> That's saying a lot for this crew. Okay. Um, if there are no questions that, that I'm, I'm seeing at this moment, and given that we do, we're actually running early for once. Um, I, I would, if there's no objection, take a moment to offer the audience if they have any questions. Um, so is there anybody here that might have a question for, for the auditors? No? All right, then. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. thank Great thank job, you. as thank always. Yeah. And, yeah, so please re reconvene at 7. So. Thank you. <laughs>